Blake Cousins here, taking calls from around the world. Welcome. Third phase of the moon has begun. It's uh, 12 a.m. midnight New York time, 9 p.m. Los Angeles time, and uh, just turned 6.03 p.m. in Hawaii, where we're broadcasting live, third phase of the moon. We've just uh, released some photographs and video all the way from Canada, or as they say, uh, Vermont, uh, basically the border, Lake Champlain, is renowned for a creature that has been uh, seen for decades, if not centuries, a mythical beast. A cryptozoologist claimed that the champ exists. And just yesterday, we released photos and video from Cindy, who was attacked, apparently, by some unknown creature caught on video. We're sharing that right now. We're going to get people's opinions of what they think about that. And uh, quite amazing stuff, I'd have to say. Whether it's real or not, well, I believe it's a living creature. What it is, I'm not exactly sure. Some people say it's a, a baby whale or a deformed dolphin of some sort. A turtle is what's come to mind. Some people even say it's a dog dressed up in a costume. So, you know, it's pretty interesting, some of the theories going around. Some people actually say there's genetically engineered dinosaurs that exist now. Deformities. We're not exactly sure. There's a lot of pollution in the waters, mutations. They exist. We want to get uh, people's comments on that. And also, Robert Bingham has an event coming up in Los Angeles. He says and invites the public show up with their cameras, skeptics alike. If you don't believe in UFOs, you might. If you show up to Robert Bingham's event over there at MacArthur uh, this Sunday, October 11th, MacArthur Park, we got Robert Bingham here, but before we get to Robert Bingham, I want to get into callers or uh, any opinions on this sea mo- or lake monster, as you would say, Lake Champ. Four oh three, you're four oh five. You're live. Third phase of moon. Welcome to the show. Hey, Blake. Pictures of, of the video you released of the monster and all. I when yeah. I saw it on Facebook this morning. I thought it could be, you know, a hoax or something, but I only saw the pictures. But once I saw the video, I was blown away, man. I mean, that kind of reminds me of a kind of like a venomous snake or something that would just go up and bite you. But apparently, one said it had no teeth, if I remember right. But I mean, seeing some of that that like that in our oceans kind of scares me, man. And I'm been able to take some risks, but not not my, not with that thing in the water. You know, that's uh, we've been getting a lot of emails saying they'll never swim in uh, Lake Champlain again after witnessing this. In, in the beginning, when the photos were coming in, just stills off the file, she said it was uh, too large to send at the time. She was going to send it later, and I wanted to see it right away. So, so she sent me like five photos, stills from the GoPro itself. And yeah, it looked amazing. But when the video came in, it confirmed that this wasn't CGI or Photoshop, whatever it was. It was something in the water and uh yeah, something like i mean this could be like uh this, this, i mean something like this can prove like maybe something like bigfoot is this I mean, I mean there's been some rumors going around here might i mean like i say i'm in the oklahoma city area that's like the center part of the state they're saying in the southwest part is bigfoot you know there's creatures that have uh yet to be discovered bigfoot is a tricky one because you would think that they're land uh, bearing animals, that there would be some remains found, but as well as in lakes and these locks that go down, you know, thousands of feet deep, miles deep in the oceans, maybe some of these creatures will never be found, but it is a a compelling video and photographs. We're we're reaching out to Cindy. We want to get her uh, eyewitness testimony with this. uh, Some people are saying, like I was waiting for her to speak up. And when you released the video, but it was just you, Dr. J, uh, Hayden, I can barely remember his last name, but it was, I think it was three or four people talking about that video, and I was just blown away just by the, the video itself. I mean, I mean, I, I am, I, mean, I'm, I think that this proves that mythological creatures could they have to exist. Which ones? I don't know. I mean, some more evidence of fairies exist or something. I don't know. Show me something. Absolutely. You know, we've just, uh, I've gotten a phone number 
And it's from a lady who actually did an expedition in Lake Champlain. I'm not going to give out the name yet, but she was in charge of mapping the whole lake, looking with a sonar, trying to pick up some pings. And they actually picked up some anomalies that resembled something big or large underwater there. And we're reaching out to her. I want to get her opinion on this video. And uh, stay tuned for that. She's been on location. We got her phone number. We're going to give her a call tomorrow, and hopefully she's around this weekend. And stay tuned to Third Phase of Moon for that upcoming interview, if we could uh, obtain it. Friday night, live radio. That's what it's all about. Let's get to uh, San Diego. Before uh, Robert Bingham, stand by. We're going to be um, getting more on what's happening this Sunday, MacArthur Park, Los Angeles, UFO summoning event. Kelly, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Eric, hey, did you uh, did you get to see the video of the Lake Champlain photos and video? Oh man, uh, yeah. Me and my wife were just talking about it, and hopefully we were hoping that you guys were getting ready to talk about that tonight. I mean, that right there was awesome. That I have never seen anything like that. That that what creature, whatever it was, that is real. I mean, you can see it like when she first goes down. The first video, like the first part of her, she like whatever it was, it like uh, like it, it got scared and hid behind the rock, and they came out and I mean literally grabbed her, open you know, where you were saying like open her mouth and grabbed her and she was freaking out. I would have freaked out if I had seen something like that too. Yeah, it was um actually I thought she handled it quite well. Immediately yeah. after it took uh, off. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I've uh, had close encounters with sea creatures with teeth, sharks, uh, tiger sharks surfing here in Hawaii, and uh, they're they're a pretty scary beast. And you got to keep it cool. And I've seen grown men scream like girls when they get really close to these things. Obviously, it's a terrifying moment, and it's always in the back of your mind about these things that just want to bite you. But in this case, I don't think it was out for uh, lunch. It was basically, I think, just saying. Stay back. This is my territory. Yeah, yeah. You know. Uh, also, I was, you know, talking, well, listening to you and you and Robert, and uh, I just looked at it. There's a it's called a star map. So you can, you know, actually track the stars and uh, planets that are around. And right now, Venus is uh, pretty close to the uh, sun, or to the moon. If you would look, it's probably like if you were looking at the moon right now. If it was in the sky. It's off to the right of it, and actually, uh, the other there's other Jupiter and Mars are actually kind of aligned with them. It's pretty close, but uh, I, I just wanted to say too, with that, that it's kind of weird that those like creatures like that every every once in a while, you know, pop up and like disappear. And I don't know, there's like different theories. It could probably be like you know that it opens up gates because we don't even you know as a as, as our planet we don't have you know discovered the how deep it's our waters are whatever creatures are down there like right now people are looking at off the coast of puerto rico and they're finding some pretty incredible pretty incredible you know beings or creatures that are down there and these things you know we don't know like the pressure because most of the stuff that is like right now that is like kind of incredible around the planet would be like you know the few meter triangle or the japanese triangle those are over water and if that type of stuff is happening that's pretty crazy well you know uh... After looking at the photographs, it was something in its own self. But when you see the video and the bubbles reacting to the motion of the creature, uh, I don't even think Industrial Light of Magic could pull it off um, as far as that thing is real. Whatever it is, it's really in there. And it's quite incredible. I want to get other people's opinions. Stand by, uh, Kelly. Let's see. Let's go to area code 604. You're live, third phase. Hello. Six zero five just dropped out. Let's go to air code seven two four. You're live. Thanks for waiting. Hey, how's it going? Hey, pretty good tonight. A lot of calls. Oh, good, good. Oh uh, well, hey, you know, I got a, a few comments about that. This is my first time calling. I've been a fan of your show for a long time, uh, despite the criticisms that you guys receive. I think you guys are doing a good job. Um, this video, man, I'm telling you, totally freaked me out. I had my family check it out, uh, the missus, and uh, my missus, she's 
kind of a hard one to convince about anything being real these days. Sure. Uh, we've had a lot of experiences in our cell, uh, with, you know, in, in our own, you know, backyard, if you will. But in regards to the sea creature, man, I tell you, at first when I saw it, I was like, wow, this is definitive proof. Okay, you, you know, Lake Champlain monster, Loch Ness, watch out. This lady did something with uh, with this photo and this video that no one else has been able to do for a long, long time, you know. Um, and then I started playing it back little by little, like you guys were showing it on your on your uh, YouTube channel. And I noticed, like, the large eyes and the way you guys described it, uh, described it I can agree with. Then I noticed, did it look like to you guys, did it have, like, nostrils maybe? Did it look like that? It did. It did, didn't it? Because, see, the reason why was because I started getting kind of scientific and within my own self, and I'm glad you guys always throw it out there for the public to look at and decide for themselves and call in like I'm doing now. And I thought, well, if it has nostrils, then doesn't that mean that it has to come up to breathe air, sort of like with a well that has a blowhole, and it has to come up, I guess, like every hour or so to breathe. I didn't notice, like, from the footage, it didn't seem like it had any gills on the side or anything. Uh, and with the traditional depictions that people would describe with the Loch Ness Monster having like flip uh, flippers for fins and stuff, I know I didn't notice anything really like that. But it looked like it had something like small little, I don't know what they, what, what, how, how can you describe it? Like small fins in the front? Well, you know, Maybe. what's kind of interesting is that um, to me it comes to mind immediately is like a manatee or a seal. They have those right. Up, right? That's what I was thinking about, like a Florida manatee, maybe. That That's a possibility, but, I mean, it's why would it attack her? Don't exactly. they usually, like, a little bit bigger and fatter, and they're kind of like docile creatures, aren't they? I mean, like, they just kind of swim around, kind of slow. You don't want to get too close, but this thing just jumped right out it, you know, like. Yeah, manatees totally are that her out. Manatees couldn't move that quickly. Seals can. No way. But they're, mm -hmm. uh, they're uh, salt water. They live in salt water. They really don't live in lakes, but it's lakes. But it moved quite like a seal underwater, dodging some kind exactly. of. Exactly. It just it was too. It was it just glided right through. You know, like a torpedo. And then, and next thing you know, it kind of swims out of frame. And you know, it just it it, it, it kind of brings more questions to mind. Um, the excitement of it, of seeing it still is still in my voice, as you can tell. But I was just like, wow. You know, what could this lady be? feeling right at this time like she survived something like this and you know if she comes on the show i would love to call back and ask her a few other questions myself because i am almost Absolutely. certain that by the time that you know she probably gets the nerve up to want to do it if she does it that uh, i'll probably have like a whole list of things to ask her uh, you said her name was cindy correct i think yeah. it was cindy that you said okay yeah and know. then you know I'm that other guy know. i want to talk about real quick before you guys let okay. me go because um that one guy, Ed, that you always have, uh, yeah. you know, come into the show from time to time. I've checked his channel. He hasn't uploaded nothing in three weeks, but he's another one. i got to give him kudos to because um, a lot of people would be afraid to do something like that, especially with all these, you know, government and, you know, conspiracy theories. People are like, hey, you know, they're, they're going after people like that to kind of suppress the truth from coming out and what have you. But, man, well, with I this one here and with Mr. Ed, man, you guys are just really going over the top, you know, and... I just really, it's, it's, I, I, mean, I have no idea what this thing is. It's like, you know, they really need to send a crew over there. They need to ask her exactly where she was at when she went for that swim and to probably drop some cameras or something down in there and, you know, just to well, play it like safe, a, of course. You know, basically, right after somebody gets bitten by a shark and they survive it, the newscast mm -hmm. hound right on top of them and usually get that interview. So we're hoping it's exactly like that. They, she well, yeah, she I would, like, I would think so too. Yeah. Hey, let me ask I you. I mean, this deserves further there? investigation. There's no doubt about that. When yeah, you look at that footage, there. you know, I mean, you sure you might have like some video experts that might want to weigh in on it and try to just say, well, it might not be CGI, but you really won't know until you actually go to that site and see for yourself. Because yeah, if the it's there, hmm? the video's up on third phase. Anybody could uh, download it. Share it, right, exactly, it. and examine it for themselves, yeah. yeah. I would just hope that they can actually get someone near to that spot and, you know, drop some cameras there or whatever. Like, what? I have questions like, well, what time of day was it, you know? Um, you know, why did she go to that particular area? Does she go there often? Was it vacation? I'm sure she probably went into more detail with the emails 
and what have you. But you know, there's a lot to be said of this. There's no doubt. Man, I thank you, you so much for letting me call in, though. It's really, really cool. It's my first time. Hey, appreciate it. Welcome uh, to Third Phase of Moon Live Radio. Is your wife around? I'd like to get her opinion. Uh, well, she's kind of like in doing her own thing, and she has her own little online thing in the next room, so I don't think I want to bring her into it. But maybe next time I'll definitely let her, you know, you know, get her, her uh, opinions and what have you. Now, she's a spiritual type of person, so she's not really the, the kind of would really want to get into it online, but just as far as the family thing, she was like, yeah, that's a creature of some kind. I don't know what that is. And, you know, I made a little joke. I said, well, we were supposed to be having a family reunion out at the lake, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to be going swimming no time soon. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. You know, uh, that was an amazing show tonight. Appreciate the caller in. Let's go to area code 562. You're live, third phase. Hey, what's up, Blake? It's Fausto. Fausto. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to the show. What's going on? So I, I heard the radio show last week. I wanted to call in just to clarify on some uh, some uh, untruths that were told. So like you were saying uh, before Robert interrupted you, that was an LA UFO channel event. It wasn't a Robert event. That was an organization that we started. And when we host our event, everyone in our event does the contact. So when we get a sighting, nobody can hold claim that they were the only one that called it down. It's a group effort, so I give the credit to the group. And the part where Robert was saying he wasn't getting credit, so that part cuts it out because it was a group effort. And I would have gladly given him credit if he would have submitted his photos that he got. We knew he had photos. We asked him for, to use them. Yas and Hans asked to use them. But he uh, he wanted to keep them. He wanted to present them on his own channel so he can uh, so he can say that he captured them. That's fine. But he didn't give us the photo, so there's no reason to put his name in the video if we ca- if I don't have his uh, footage. That's why in the video I clearly said, Josman, Hans Boysman, and Jonathan Castro recorded this. This is their footage. I am just presenting it. As well as his claims that I wasn't there, I wasn't at the event because I was recovering from a concussion that I had the week before. Uh, that's why I want to call in. I want to clarify on those uh, on those false on those uh, falses they were told by Robert. Okay, well, you know, that's fair enough. That's um so basically Robert Bingham had some photographs of the exact same sighting that was going on. What was this sighting that you're talking about? It is a humanoid anomaly that we uh, we filmed on um, You know, that that quite that video made the rounds. Um may I share it on Third Phase of Moon tonight as we're uh, talking about it? Uh You'd have to ask uh, Jonathan, Jasmine, and Hans, since it's their footage, they're the ones who have the right to release it. I don't Absolutely. have the right to it. Okay, well, let me ask you this. Did Robert Bingham have any part in the knowledge of this summoning power? Yes. Uh, I like to use the word contact. I, I, I don't like to use the word summoning because it, it draws people away from this subject just because they're afraid of the word and they – they tie it to negative cognitation. But I used the word uh, UFO contact, and Robert did have a part in spreading the knowledge as well as Dr. Greer, as well as uh, Prophet Yahweh. That's how actually I learned. I was surfing through YouTube, and I found Prophet Yahweh first in 2005. I didn't think much of it because uh, I wasn't really into ufology that much at the time. Then I later learned about Robert Bingham and then Stephen Greer. So because of them three, I realized if all these three guys can do it, then what makes it special to any one person? So that's when I hopped on my roof and started trying it as, as well. Uh, I also like to throw in that I did reach out to Robert multiple times before I ever tried to make UFO contact, and I asked him I asked him online. I even went to an event and I asked him, uh, how did he do it, so he can explain to me. He uh, never gave me a direct answer, so that is why our, our uh, methods are different, because I had to learn on my own and create my own method through what I saw Greer, uh, Robert, and Prophet Yahweh doing. So that's why our methods are completely different, because I learned by trying to, by just experimenting with it myself. I, uh, Robert never announced his method till after I, I put out my uh, how to contact you with full videos. Well, we got a Robert Bingham here. He's on uh, live. And um, Robert, anything? What, uh, I have a lot to say. Um, um are you there, Blake? Yep, we're live. Okay. Well, 
Fausto, everything Fausto is saying is, is totally false. Uh, he's just trying to use me as a springboard to put himself out there and take credit for all the work that I've done. As you know, he was there, uh, uh, um, John Elias, who calls himself Dr. John, you sent him over to the house to verify uh, how he discovered it, and he said right on on the video that he discovered it from uh, going to my events. I have videos of that. But anyway, yes, Robert, just, I attended, wait, I attended wait, your wait, event. Did I interrupt you, I, you never when you were told talking? me how to do it. Lake, Lake, did I interrupt him when he was talking? Okay, no, well, no, go ahead. You don't have any class, Fosso, and that's why I really don't want you to be at my events anymore. Stay away. Um, I was over there at this event that uh, Hans Boyce went through, and they asked me to summon, and so that's what I did. And uh, Humanoid showed up. Fosto was not even there. If you look at his video, he presents the video as if he's the one that took the shot. He keeps saying we. He wasn't even there. Um, just so he could get the hits. That doesn't really, I don't really care about that. Uh, he went on uh, Dan Crapo's uh, UFO show in Canada, and him and Jasmine, uh, Dan Crapo asked him, uh, where did you start this? They started with me but then they're going to say they started on their own. Well, that's fine. Um, see how far you get with you know without my help. Because, you know, I'm never going to show up to your events anyway. Uh, I was doing you a favor. You never even thanked me. Uh, you know, that's that's how you are, Fossil. And so be, be up there. And what I teach is honesty and truth. I don't teach this uh, stuff that you do. You know, you're a... Uh, you're one of these people that are, I, I call you a leech. That's what you are. Um, so I'm going to stay away You're funny, from Robert. That. Hey, wait, wait, wait. You're funny. Hey, I mean, you are a leech, man. Uh-huh. Stay away That's from my, my event. I don't go to my event. I started my own event hey, well, because your events were twice a year, and you were trying to get money from people for autographs when I just host what? events to present scientific evidence so that way, People can uh, actually see it and not have anything else on it. I'm not going I'm, to your events. Don't worry about that. Well, you know what? You don't have any cash. Stay away. Because of that. Yeah. So you You're can keep going your events, spreading You're the dogma, joke, and telling everyone that these are angels, but that, nobody's going to go into it that way. We need to present it in a scientific way because that's how we're going to reach the majority of the people. That's the reason that I had to start the event because we needed to take it in the scientific route where we're not making assumptions and jumping to ideas saying that they're angels and all these other well, things that we are not sure that they can possibly be. The only evidence we can present is the video that we have and what, what we can see, and that's what we need to present to the go people. Kiss back because that's and what they're go work with him. All right? <laughs> uh, uh, don't Blake, worry, Robert. I'm going anyway, to keep doing my work. My, I hope you keep Blake, doing your work. I hope you like my event at MacArthur Park. It's going to be tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Hold on, Robert. Hold, hold on, Robert. It's at on Sunday. It's not tomorrow. It's uh, coming up on s- Sunday. Uh, tomorrow, I'm meeting with, tomorrow I'm meeting with uh, Jaime Musan. As a matter of fact, in the morning, we're going to do a shooting. And so I don't know what Fossil, he's just somebody that, like a lot of people, just want to hop on my KON uh, and ride to the top without doing the work. I've been doing this for 19 years. This character came out of nowhere and is already doing all these things. Yeah, I'm not worried about him, but I just want to make things clear. He, he's not welcome, you know, anywhere in my... Uh, anyways, I don't want to give him no don't, more time, Blake. Uh, I don't worry, Robert, that's okay. Because, hey, you stay away, all right? Yeah, that's okay, Robert. Greer started doing this in the 70s, before, 20 away. years before you ever held stay your first away. event. Prophet Yahweh in 2005 got a UFO to show Bye, up for Blake. Channel 7 Bye, on ABC News. This guy's a joke. <laughs> So, yeah, first one to start. And we don't hear about you till 2012 or 13. Wow. Sorry, Blake. You know, um, I, I, had to clear, I had to clear that up because when I heard last uh, week everything that he was claiming, claiming that I was his student, it, it just it got to me. Before, usually Robert's done this before, and I, I, I'll let him rant and go with his things, but this time uh, I saw that people were, were falling for the lies that he was saying, and I had to clarify that part. And the evidence is out there. If I really learn from Robert, why are our methods so different? <laughs> that anyone can do it. And that's the biggest reason we started our event, because we don't want people to think that it's anything special for anybody. It's something anybody can do, and that's the message we try to get across, and we try to bring it. Uh, yeah, 
we try to throw the event so they stay free so we don't charge anybody and so we just present the evidence scientifically so all we can claim is this is the footage we recorded, this is what we saw, there's nothing beyond that. We can't say anything past that. And that's the way we want to take our research. We don't want to take assumptions and jump and say that they're angels or anything else because then people are going to be drawn away from the subject. That's the reason that these events have been going on for two years and they still haven't gone uh, bigger than anything, beyond, than anything beyond events with 20 people or 30 people. Yeah, it, it starts turning to a cult-like thing once we start involving religious and religion into it. So that's why we need to keep it scientific and just present people what we can what we can uh, present. We can't make assumptions and jump beyond it. You know, Fausto. Uh, I would uh, like. Yep, that's uh, you know, it's it's a UFO community out there. Everybody should get together and collaborate as best as possible in regards to footage that is captured and, and giving credit where credit's due as far as video, who captured what, when, where, yep. who. And I think that's uh, what Third Phase of Moon's doing, that's for sure. We uh, want to give where credit is, credit's deserved. We have that video that we shot with Fausto, and we're going to be putting a link with that. We call it UFO Sightings, the people who summon UFOs. And, uh, yeah, Fausto doesn't say summon. What do you say, Fausto? Uh, UFO contact. I like to use uh, that word instead, so that way people aren't drawn away by the word summon. All right. Well, you know what? Uh, Robert Bingham's having his event on the 11th, and, you know, people are going to show up. We'll see what happens. Um, you're going to be doing your own thing. What's the name of your group, Fausto? Uh, it is LA UFO Channel, and we're also starting a new group called LA UFO Field Research Organization. That's going to just be LA UFO on a meetup. Or if okay, you guys uh, also, if you, have, if you have an Instagram, you can search uh, Fausto uh, underscore UFO, and we also post the events there. Got it, Fausto. Uh, appreciate the call in. You know, um, there's two sides to the story, and uh, there it was. Everybody can make their own uh, decision on who taught who what. You know, that's how it went down. Let's get to other callers coming into uh, third phase of moon. Let's go to area code 831. You're live third phase. You know, I, I'm not really into studying sea creatures really all that much, although I was interested in the Loch Ness monster when I was a kid. But, um, it, you know, I mean, there might be something there for sure. You just got to check it out. And I, I don't know, you know, sometimes you can say, oh, it's for sure not computer stuff. And I'm not an expert really in that, in that department, but, you guys are, I guess, so you can tell for sure, you know, if there's nothing computerized going on, probably. Well, absolutely. Uh, you know, the opinion that I have, there's no CGI going on in this uh, video. Whatever it is, it's there. And uh, that's that's my uh, opinion, and that's all I've got. But I think it's a good one. Uh, I think Robert Bingham's actually called back. Robert, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Um, well, what, what really upset me is that uh, he wouldn't give me a chance to talk. You know, I let him talk and, and say everything that he wanted to say, but uh, he would not let me talk. And that, you know, I, anyway. Um, well, yeah. Uh, you know, everybody's got a, a way of communicating, no doubt about it. What well, do you got? I was say? hoping you would mute him so I could explain myself without having to hear him interrupt well, me every tra- second. I- Absolutely. I was trying to, I muted both of you guys because over talking doesn't do anything good for radio. So definitely I was. I know. Well, anyway, um, you know, he uh, doesn't speak the truth and uh, neither does Yaz, man, but they're they're young. And and the the problem with uh, what I do, Blake, is when I teach people how to summon and and I show them things, a lot of times it goes to their head that they they want to be famous or they want to... uh, Make lots of money. They see dollar bill signs in their eyeballs, and 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 they, and they, when he says that he wants the science, what science? You know, I, I really did all the work. Um, I showed them a lot, and uh, I'll be I'll be coming out with my book soon. And uh, I've been doing this for 19 years, you know. And this guy just started, and he's already thinks he's an authority on it, you know. And uh, he talks about Prophet Yahweh. Yahweh only did one thing, and I didn't even know about him. I'd been doing it way before Prophet Yahweh. I just went public only three years ago, three and a half years ago. But um, that's the problem, you know. Um, anyway, I'm 
I'm having an event tomorrow with the Japanese station, and uh, not tomorrow, but uh, Sunday. And tomorrow I'm having an, uh, a private event with uh, uh, Jaime Mosan from Mexico. And so, wow, anyway. that, that should be interesting. Yeah, look forward to hearing what goes down tomorrow. This whole weekend oh, should be I'll quite exciting. Footage. We look forward to it. Um, you know, we uh, we got other callers, uh, but Fausto's still here. Fausto, are you still here? No, I guess not. Um, you know, oh, that's Robert, good riddance yeah, to look we, that rubbish. <laughs> yeah. You know, let's look forward to what happens this weekend. Everybody uh, show up to MacArthur Park Mall. Bring your cameras. It's, sorry, Sunday. Yeah. It's Sunday, October 11th. Sunday. Sunday. Uh, yep, we'll put the and, date down. Uh, it's going to be historical. But uh, anyway, um, uh, thanks a lot, uh, Blake. And uh, I'm going to get a sign off. And uh, I have a big day tomorrow. Okay, so, man. Uh, thank you to everybody out there. Good luck, Robert. Okay, thanks. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Yep. Let's go to uh, area, another San Diego San Diego caller, 619. Welcome to the show. Thanks for waiting. Oh, I didn't I didn't really push one. But I, I, I've never... Yeah, I didn't push one, but I did see something in one time. Oh, yeah? What did you was see? Like, well, it was just, um, late at night. I looked up in the sky, and I see just these lights going way too fast to be like... To be planes or anything like that, they were kind of like darting back and forth, like so rapid. It was kind of, it was just a trip. But um, so I mean, I just figured it was something extra, you know, UFO-ish. So I couldn't see any shape of the um, of the craft. But I, it, the lights were just, they were going from one area to the next so so quickly. It couldn't have been else but that. Uh, that's the only thing I've ever experienced myself. Well, yeah, you know what. Sure. Yeah, zigzagging lights in the sky, that's a dead giveaway. When you see something go from one point to another and take 90-degree angles and do a massive jumps, you know something's going down. Now let's go to another caller. Hey, thanks for calling in. 562, you're live, third phase. Welcome to the show. Hey, Blake. Sorry, I was uh, muted when you when you asked me about Salon earlier. Oh, hey, no problem, uh, Fausto. Yeah, you know, um, this whole thing back and forth, the summoners, uh, what about – Jim Martin. Jim Martin is. Have you collaborated with him? Jim says that Robert Bingham taught him all what he knows in regards to the uh, phenomenon. Oh yeah, I know. Me and Jim are great friends. We're both in the in the mindset of trying to get it out, the science, and uh, trying trying to just get the information out there, not worried about who's getting credit. And that's the most important thing, like you said, like it's community. I hope Robert has no hard feelings. I feel bad that he feels this way. Uh, yeah. But it's, yeah, it's 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 I can't help how people feel about about uh, about just things that happen. But we would have gladly given it as soon as we got in the footage, but again I hope he has no hard feelings. I hope he has a great event tomorrow and Sunday, his private one with Jaime. Uh I wanted to let people know that we'll be having an event for our group on next uh next week on Sunday on the eighteenth. It'll be at Hollydale Park in uh, in Southgate, California. Where we held the first event, the first event you guys helped us promote. Okay, Fausto. Well, we'll be uh, keeping up with Fausto Perez. His Holiday events have brought in crowds, and this community, people just got to get along and collaborate. Collaboration is the thing, and hopefully Fausto and Robert could have uh, some kind of understanding here, because I think when people come together and share the experience of a sighting. It gets quite a quite amazing at that time when humans uh, bond and start to communicate and ask the big questions. Kelly, San Diego, what do you think about the whole uh, between Robert and Fausto? You know them both, right? Yeah, I know them. Uh, I don't know. You know what? To me, it's just like I'll always, you know, like when I tell you about some of the videos that I've seen like uh, on other two channels, it's like, to me, it's, you know, it's all about, you know, sharing information and everything. But at the same time, you know, like, it doesn't matter. Like, uh, I've seen the video. That's remember when I brought it up the first time is that i seen, I knew that was, um, that he was there. Um, Robert would bring him was there because they even said his name. And it's not the point that, like, uh, you know, that who was, you know, who was summoning. But to me, when, you know, over there in the, in the L.A. County area, it was, 
do with Robert. You kind of brought that forward to the to the thing. It doesn't matter if you know who else. You know, like of course they're trying to learn a way to find out how to you know some of these things and be and, and these beings. The problem it's not a to me it shouldn't be an issue of like. I understand, like, with, just like with you, you and your brother, you know, you want to give props on props to do, but at the same time, you know, sharing information or sharing that type of stuff, it, I can see uh, what uh, Robert's uh, talking about as well, because, you know, he, he did, he did, he busted on the, he was the first one to bust that over there in L.A. scene, and I've been to some of his, his, you know, some of his summies, I'm going to be there this Sunday, too, as well, when that happens. Wow, because that's I just cool. want to say that, like, I mean, I mean, at the same time, I just want to say that, you know, to me, it's, it's about sharing information and showing, you know, how much love that uh, everybody's supposed to, like, you know, it's about disclosure. That's the whole point about this whole, with your with your show, it doesn't matter. Everybody show Dr. Dr. J on Elias, even his, with his as well. It, it's all about disclosure, and let's all make sure that we all understand of, of what these beings are. It's not, it's not about anybody else, like, who's bringing it out. Really, actually, if you really want to get down to it, it's all about finding out who they are, where they're from, how long they've been here? I mean, the whole question that ancient astronaut theory always try to believe, you know, where are they coming back or when are they coming back? Have they ever left? I mean, there's a lot of those questions with myself is I think they never left. You know I mean? They've always been here. Something else has been here. There's many different types of species that are out there. We're not the only ones out there. And I just hope that everybody gets along and let's just, you know, find out what, find out what all the sharing that, all we're, sharing doing. that we're doing. Exactly. Let's, uh, let's get along. And, you know, Robert Bingham was – invited to come on Third Phase Moon for the first time to the public. And then once that uh, was made public, there became a community. And it became big. And it became worldwide. And it all started out Third Phase Moon. But, hey, everybody does their own thing and have have a great time doing it. Because disclosure is cool, I think. It's fun and cool and enlightening. Kelly, is your wife over there? I want to get your uh, your wife's opinion on the, yeah, she's the here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Go on, come on, babe. Come, uh, let's hear it. She's embarrassed, but she's the same thing with me. You know, she's always saying that do you hear her in the background because it's the truth. You know, me and her, like, well, I, you know, we got into each other with, you know, trying to find out disclosure all over the place. But, you well, know, this, I, that one video that this. you're talking about, this, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, let me ask her this. The first impression, impression when you saw the video right off the bat, then that flash second, Basically, what was your first impression? Was it no way, or was it, oh, my God, no, this can I was like, you know, when I first saw it, I was like, this is real. This is real. You know, I've seen a lot of stuff, but this looks real to me. This is like, yeah. I would like to hear from the lady that, you know, that shot this video. That's who I want to hear from. And, the, and the, you know, her attack, uh, she claims that this attacked her I'll, I'm going to hear what she has to say. Absolutely. Uh, we're reaching out to Cindy. She's she's um, she's um thinking about it. You know, just after an attack like that, you're in a little bit of a trauma situation. And I imagine she is. Imagine you yeah. in close encounter with something like that. And maybe she doesn't want to do the interview right away. Hopefully people, I understand it. And uh, I think it makes a lot of sense. And there's a lot of people that have a lot of a, uh, post traumatics right after shark attacks or cre uh, you know, dog attacks. And they kinda go in their shell for a little bit. But she uh was amazing on how she uh captured it and held her cool and described it in her emails. So hopefully hear, hopefully we, we hear from her soon. Absolutely. Um you know that that's uh we're waiting for that. Cindy, I hope you're listening. We want to speak to you and get your uh accounts of the situation that happened at the lake we got another caller in and then uh this is third page moon radio we uh like to get it to everybody before we get going 440 you're live third phase moon welcome to the show hello four four yeah four four zero you're there live how's it going hi it's going okay um listen blake uh i just wanted to tell you I started writing you an email and then I stopped. Um, Why? I just wanted your advice on, well, I don't know. Because explaining it in an email just seems a little bit annoying to me. I'd rather talk to people. 
Um, so this is what happened the night of the eclipse. I'm with my mother, okay. who's 70-something years old, and my grandson, who's 17. We're down uh, below my mom's house in the park watching the moon come up about 8-something. Where? And so we're talking. Uh, this was in uh, east of Cleveland. It's actually, I don't care to say it doesn't bother me, East Lake, Ohio, which is odd, and it's really close to Lake Erie, okay? Uh, we also have a CEI power plant over there. I've never actually seen a UFO. I've always believed, you know, in, in things like that. But um, because I'm not that arrogant to think I'm the only one on the planet uh, or in the universe. Um, but anyhow, this this what happens is we're sitting there talking after the moon's coming up. It's probably around I don't know eight fifteen ish to eight thirty ish, and I knew that the eclipse was coming later, but. You know, we're just talking about stuff, and I'm teaching my grandson about stars and whatever. We see something really high up, and I'm like, dude, uh, that could be a satellite. It could be. You got to rule that one out. You know. Then all of a sudden, these two objects come, and I'm talking. If you take, and the only way I can describe it to you is if you take your thumb, or even your index finger, and take it above the tree line. That's about how high it up. It was up. Now, what I have discovered, I always wonder why people can't get good pictures. I figured it out. You're looking at this object and you're thinking to yourself, all the things it could be besides a UFO. Because, see, you're trying to rationalize and trying to rule out logical items in your mind. So I'm thinking, okay, it's a plane. No, that is not no plane. Then I'm like, helicopter. Oh, no, they're flying too close to each other. And they don't even look like anything and there's no sound they were flying so close if it was a helicopter they would have tore each other up they were flying together so i'm staring at it and then i say chris look look and my mom looks and my grandson looks and they're like oh my god and so the first one veers off towards the east and then the uh second one veers towards the lake so i take a picture and I'm going to send you this. They're not. It's a nighttime picture, so it's not really good, but you could see what I'm saying. Um, sure. You, you look at the first picture that I take, and it just looks like two little stars. Then I'm like, oh man, I got to zoom in. So it's, of course, it's just a phone camera. So I zoom in, and when I take the picture, I catch the one on the right doing its metamorphosis of color. Because what it was doing is it was going from red to like a bluish gray, and so was the other one. But the other one was veering, go, going further away, so it was getting smaller, and it was doing the same. But it almost looked as though it was going to disappear, like it was morphing. So I take this picture, and I'm thinking, okay, what is it going to look like? Turns out I get this little, these little round balls that almost kind of look like metal, like the one on the right. The one on the left, when you see it's it's far away, it, it looks um, very dim, and it's kind of like a reddish color. So it was in its morphing thing, like it was going to disappear, but it was heading towards the lake. The one on the right, it was like a metal, it, it looked like a, green, like a bluish, uh, grayish color. And I'm thinking, God, it almost looks like a Death Star planet or something. So I go jump in my car to follow it, and my mother starts freaking out because she's 70-something and she's chicken. And she's like, you're not going to follow this. Take me home. Well, the long and the short, because I had to drop her off on the way, I lost the one that was moving east that was still very visible. But, and then I went close by. We have an airport close by. I dropped her off, went close by, went to the little – it's a little mini airport. You know what I'm saying? Went there and – checked out to make sure nothing was flying around or nothing landed, and there wasn't. Um, my <clears throat> grandson said he saw something similar in Willoughby a week before that. My question to you is, I hear of all these shapes and sizes in these things. Um, I think I saw an unidentified flying object. I don't know if it's theirs or ours. Of, of course you did, and that's... Uh... If you can't explain what you're seeing, it's an unidentified flying object. Um, wow. You could have not emailed that without the explanation you just did. Uh, I appreciate the call in. Okay, good. 
Because no, that would have been saw way... something. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and are there round ones out there? Orbs? Red orbs? Yeah. Well, Millions. I don't know what it was. It... There are. Orbs. Okay. Yeah, they're there. Are they? They're there are... All the... What well, are what they? Are they? I... are they? Yeah. Spirits? Are they spaceships? Interdimensional? Or... Spirits oh, into okay. dimensional beings? Uh, you know, sky's the limit. There's a lot of things they could be, but they're, uh, you know, there's something that we need to find out. We, I don't have the answers. I wish I did. That's why we're here. And that's right. why you uh, just called in, because uh, we all need to find questions to these answers. Hey, appreciate it. Appreciate you hey, calling thank in. Thank you for and, listening. Uh, articulate. Thank you for letting me tell you this. Absolutely. I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you, buddy. I'll send you the pictures. Send those photos, please. Yeah, okay. We'll, tell uh, me your we'll opinion. We'll be standing by. Thank you. If you want to find out what's going on, tune into Third Phase Moon every Friday. Listen to it raw as it comes in. We'll be back. And then make sure to check out Third Phase of Moon YouTube for updates as they come in real time. You never know what you're going to see. My name is Blake Cousins. Keep your eyes on the skies. We're not alone. We'll see everybody again next time.